Welcome to a beautiful morning as the sun is rising in Burgundy and today we are going on an exciting adventure of this historic region visiting chateaus, vineyards and starting in a hot air balloon. I'll be honest, someone's a bit nervous about that. I'm terrified, quite scared of heights but I've never been in a hot air balloon and I'm also quite excited to see it. I mean we're going up in a basket. I have never been up in a hot air balloon before and I'm quite happy that the first time was going to be in France because it was here at the Palace of Versailles that the first hot air balloon flight took place in front of King Louis XVI and all of his courtiers. For precautions they decided not to send a human up so they sent a duck, a cockerel and a sheep. For the first time in the history of the world land-based animals had taken to the skies and the duck, the cockerel and the sheep were named heroes of the air by the king and given a place in the royal menagerie. And now we're about to and we are very much land-based animals. Yeah. low enough to just reach down and grab a bunch of grapes. We sort of are. It's incredible. Such a beautiful area. Isn't it stunning? I can't wait to go and explore everything. Me neither. This is the beautiful village of Mercure which we'll be exploring much more later today if we ever make it back down to it alive. I'm still terrified. <laughs> We are really high now aren't it's we? It's really pretty but I, I just... You're doing so well. I love looking down at the patchwork of vines. This whole area has been cultivated for a thousand years. So Steph, when you said visiting Chateau, was this the way you meant or are you actually going to see some Chateau later today? You were actually going to go inside some. Okay. This is stunning. I have to say this is one of the best ways I've ever known of visiting a Chateau. I actually met the owner of this Chateau, Claire, and she's invited us to go and film the Chateau later today. So although she has invited us to visit her, I'm not sure she's expecting us to drop in by hot air balloon, so I hope we avoid landing in the courtyard. Cockles and sheep, that's quite fitting. That's the first animals to go up in a hot air balloon. There's just the duck missing. <laughs> Just below us is the Canal du Centre. There's a canal barge in the lock with some lucky passengers on their week-long cruise. It looks lovely that boat, the Adrienne. It's getting crowded in the skies today. That's the Chateau de Bellecroix which was a Templar stronghold. It's now a lovely hotel. I was not expecting to see ostriches on this journey, I'm going to be honest. This is stunning, look at the roof of that church. What a way to see Burgundy. Right, we're going right into the tree. Right. Uh, <laughs> you okay, Philip? <laughs> we're in quite a lot of crow's hips. That was unexpectedly exciting. The balloon has decided and we're landing in a hedge. Frankly, Philip, you could practically jump it now. Home sweet home. You did it, Philip. You don't need to tell me twice. <laughs> no one has That's ever that. got out of a hot air balloon that fast. <laughs> Thank you. Michael, you want the same? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We've just been handed sparkling wine to celebrate a safe landing. And something tells me that this is only going to be my first taste of wine for today. Cheers all. The day has just got even more glamorous because we've just been told that this is the vehicle that is going to be taking us around Mercure to the vineyards. And Melanie, this is your amazing van. It is, yeah, so, it's from 74 and, and it's been fully renovated. It's a Renault Estafette. It's so perfect. <laughs> There's even a basket and little hats. So oh, perfect. Yeah. Oh, and a fan. <laughs> Does get warm in Burgundy. Okay, this is going to be the best day ever.
So we are starting the day in Mercure, Chateau de Chamire is one of the oldest chateaux here in Mercure. It's so beautiful. It's the beautiful, it's wow. amazing. And the colors, the autumn colors, they are really, really nice. Okay, well, let's go and meet let's the owner. Go. This is our home, Chateau de Chamire. This is where we live. My grandparents got three daughters and two of them are born in this house. So it's not just a winery, it's also a family house, which is uh, something very special for us, for sure. We're going down underneath the main floor of the chateau now. Ooh, look at that sound of the creaking door. We have a vaulted cellar like this below La Lande. And can you tell me, Philip, why is it not filled with barrels of wine? <laughs> what are we doing with our lives? This is glorious. But I don't think it's practical to keep wine in barrels for us. I think we're going to have to have some sort of cage system of bottles. But well, we do need to start using this cellar. Yeah. This is where the pigeons would have been housed in the past. And from here, there is a magnificent view over the formal garden of the chateau, the French garden, with all of the vineyards just rolling behind it. Amory has offered to take us on a tour of the vineyards. So we're going in this trusty steed and we're going to see the beautiful land that lies around this chateau. We own vineyards here in this village, in Mercure, yes. in Burgundy, in the 12th century. No, no, nobody's per perfect, you know. <laughs> So this is our roots. I don't think I have blood, I say. I maybe have wine, but I don't have <laughs> blood. You know? I have to double check about that. In 1932, my great-grandparents bought Chateau de Chamery, and during a Sunday lunch, they gave the keys to my grandparents. I'm glad they attended the lunch. <laughs> because the story would have been different. So this is Mercury downtown, like uh, New York downtown. <laughs> These vines were 120 years old. And Mercury was in the past two different villages, and they have been merged by my grandfather in 1972. The beautiful place to walk, to ride, to live, to enjoy. You used to live in New York? Yes, for a few years. And then Burgundy drew you back? Yes, definitely. <laughs> our roots are here. We reconnected us to our roots, and now we commute base here, but we commute a lot with the US and Canada and UK. I guess. Time to taste now. Oh, yes. <laughs> Welcome to Chamiret. Thank you. We feel that it's very important to taste wine with something to eat. So what sort of things do you serve with the wine? If we want to be very uh, French and very local, we serve uh, Boeuf Bourguignon. Mm. It could be with uh, Mercure, uh, uh, Les Ruelles, shrimp salad uh, with some greens and just uh, La Mission Premier Cru to Chateau de Chamiret as well to pair. Oh, you're making me really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Come upstairs. It's breathtaking. Definitely breathtaking. Oh. And you have a very nice view all over the Côte Chalonnaise. All the houses you can see around the tasting room here uh, are guest houses to be. At some point, oh. they'll be renovated. Oh, how exciting. We actually have two guest houses. People like to be sitting there in the vineyard. Why am I not surprised? I mean, <laughs> look at that. Who would not want to be here? Is it possible to see one yes, of the guest houses? I'm sure we'll uh, be able to visit one of them. Thank the you. The customers just left this morning, so we'll uh, have a little tour. Cheers. 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 Welcome. It's a wine I really enjoy before starting a lunch because it's very refreshing. It's a wine that you are looking for an extra sip, I would say. A good bottle of wine for us is an empty bottle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I finished the wine that was meant to whet my appetite. It's definitely worked. I am salivating and the food has arrived. We have a seafood terrine, potato salad, Ooh, roast beef with a sauce, pork terrine and charcuterie, chicken and a mustard sauce, and of course, local cheese. This is my heaven. It's Chateau de Chamire white, so it's Chardonnay 100%, and it's quite rich, but also very delicate. Uh, flinty, long finish, and it's a perfect wine to have a glass with any kind of fish of uh, white meat. Cheers. Well, cheers. cheers! It's like the vineyards in autumn. Yeah, look at the colour, it really does match the landscape perfectly. Well, as this one's supposed to be good with chicken and fish, I am going to start with the seafood terrine and the chicken. Oh, it's so oh, another wine another coming wine. out. And it's uh, vineyards my grandfather, Marquis de Jouenne, about 70 years ago. He took up the wines and he replanted it. It's very crunchy, very juicy. It's very lush, it's very round. It should go very well with cheese. 
It's actually hard for me to put into words how wonderful this experience is. The food is delicious. Every morsel is perfect. The chicken in the mustard sauce is cooked to perfection. I am so rarely speechless, but that paired with glorious wines and, oh, I just said the word paired and honestly that wasn't on purpose, but now it's time for dessert. And we have a pear, again in wine, but in a well-cooked yes. wine. And we've been talking about how each aspect of life in Burgundy is taken to its perfect finish. Each dish, each wine, but also the way that you serve things. Amory's been telling us how important it is to have the right glass to taste the wine, because the glasses themselves make a huge difference to the finish. We have different glasses uh, that we're using at Chateau de Chamery. First of all, a, a, a white glass, which was established for red. So there's no one generic way. Even if it's made for red, it might be better for a white. We did a blind tasting yes. uh, 10 years ago, 40 different glasses. And this, with our wines, was yes. perfect. And for the red, it's burgundy glass uh, made by Rideau. We are going to go and visit the guest houses of the Chateau de Chamiré. You will not believe how lovely they are. So I'll show you, but this house was uh, built in uh, 1733. Well, very simple house, open kitchen. I've just seen this. A warm welcome to Stephanie Jarvis and team. Honestly, the view from the tea station. Tea station, obviously, it's the most important part of the house. <laughs> Kettle is here. And that view. This is what you would see first thing in the morning making your first bleary eyed cup of tea. This is kettle. idyllic. I love the island as well. It's beautiful. No, honestly, this place is incredible. Philip, we are coming back this winter. Yes, yes we are. We're going to rent this this winter. Love it. Oh, I love the books. <laughs> oh, the colour. Calm, very peaceful. And with the view of the chateau. So, your neighbours. <laughs> exactly. Three bedrooms, three bathrooms. The views from every single window. Vineyards, as far as the eye can see. Everything you do, you do incredibly well. Well, thank you, Stephanie, really. I found my spot. If I was renting this house, the downstairs bedroom opens out onto this little courtyard and the view from the little stone wall is of this. I can't imagine a more perfect view for just sitting here reading with a cup of tea. And there's a lantern and steeple. Yeah, this is France, isn't it? That's just France in a single view. Better than Emily in Paris, isn't it? Do you know what the best thing about this house is? The pool? The mini bar. The mini bar? Come and see the mini bar. Outside? Oh yeah. Yes, this is the key to the mini bar. Big door for mini bar. Yeah, big door. It's a walking. Are you sure you call it a mini bar, not a bar? <laughs> a maxi bar. Yes. A, bar. a barn, mini barn. Oh, um, there is, is oh my, look at so, this. Here is a, a little selection of the wines from our domains. Oh. So when the guest arrives, even late at night, they just take the keys, enter the mini bars, and uh, help themselves. This is perfect. Oh, it's so delicious. So delicious. We are coming back, Steph. We are definitely, definitely coming 100%. back. And I already know how much I love this one. This is the first one we had yep. today. Immediately recognizable by the little rabbit. And a little sewn out as well. Oh, it's perfect. The guests really enjoy it. So I will here show you our little hidden secret, which is uh, really, uh, it's one of our last project. This is where we keep our DNA. Some bottles for each cuvee. So how old are the first bottles in here? Oh, here we have the first cuvee that was bottled at the Chateau. It is this particular bottle from 1934. So you can see it's Chateau de Chamiret with the crown of the Marquis, because yes. um, the Marquis de Joen d'Herville, he's the grandfather of my husband. My husband represents now the fifth generation <gasps> at Chateau de Chamiret. We kept the yes. crown, Chateau de Chamiret, Les Cinq, it's a particular cuvee, which is to me one of the best one. So Vinotech is basically a library instead of bibliotech. It's exactly. a, it's a wine it's library. A, a wine library, you have it. I Thank love you. the ladder. That is incredible. Nuit Saint-Georges 2016, which is not so old, but it's in a good place. <laughs> I think she's trying to tell us something. I think it's time to go. Come on, team. Thank you so much, Pauline. It was a real pleasure having oh, you today. I hope you had a good time. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. It was an honor. You have to come back. So we are, we'd love to, well. yes. Exactly. I, I, will, I will come to visit you and... There are always good reasons to come back.
Okay. Fantastic. And See you at last. <laughs> bye bye. Ever since we saw the Chateau de Ruy from the hot air balloon this morning, I have been really looking forward to coming here. What a spectacular chateau. Oh, look at that appearing through the gates, opening all by themselves. We seriously need electric gates at last. Uh, yeah. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. Hello, Hello Claire. <laughs> Good Hi. to see you again. Good so, to see you. So welcome uh, in the Rue Castle. And thank you. You will have uh, Raoul, my husband, who will uh, make you the visit. Fantastic. We'll join that and I'll see you afterwards. Yes. See you after. We're really lucky because Claire's husband is about to give a tour in English to a group who are here. So we're going to hitch a ride and discover more about the chateau. I'm the Comte Raoul de Tanem, the owner of the, the castle, and uh, my wife, uh, the Comtesse and uh, Hugues, one of the last, uh, the last boy. <laughs> this castle is a, a private property which is in my family since the end of the 12th century. The, the oldest part of the castle is uh, the keep, we'll see better in the second courtyard, and it was built in 1180, 1190. A billiard room with a billiard table, mm -hmm. which is a French billiard, that means there are no pockets. And on the carpet, this is a family coat of arms, so it's possible to see this coat of arms in many, many places of the castle. Mm -hmm. On the coat of arms, there are three stars. The star symbolizes the law, it's like a sheriff badge. And in the middle, we have a chevron, which symbolizes a wolf. Because at this time, castle was like a shelter. So in case of attack, villagers used to come under the protection of the mm -hmm. castle. We have two unicorns and a crown. Before, it was a medieval helmet and two lions. But after Middle Age, they consider the helmet and the lion as too aggressive, so they put unicorns which are more romantic. <laughs> <laughs> My great great grandfather, Raoul de Montessu, this man had one hobby he was a wood carver. So he carved many, many pieces of furniture in his life. He carved, for example, uh, the clock just here, the little table behind me. But his masterpiece is that one. This is the most beautiful thing that he made. And he decided to in exhibit it during the International Warfare Exhibition in Paris in 1889, the Eiffel Tower one, and he received the gold prize for its quality. Wow. You have to find where you put the keys in the top. Okay, where's the keyhole? Okay, there. Philip, you are way better at this sort of thing Don't than I am. Don't say anything. I'm gonna... It's quite hard to find. <laughs> we may be here sometime. Um, it's uh, in fact in the these things. Oh my God. What? What? No. I would. I wouldn't have found that. Found that. There is no way that we would ever have seen that. Yes. Yeah, so clever. Here. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and the little watercolor on the wall. This is a self-portrait of him walking in his workshop. Mm -hmm. Ladies, I'm sorry, but this, this room was only for gentlemen so at this time. After dinner, men used to come here for, for, for playing billiards, smoking cigars and talking about politics. At the same time, ladies used to, to reach a little ladies' salon in order to have a, a cup of tea and to organize next weddings. <laughs> it's quite small, but it's quite pretty, so I, I invite you to, to pass through this door. So first, this is the library, and in a corner, this little ladies' salon. I keep close the window just in order to protect books and paintings from the sun. And in here, the chairs all have Fable de la Fontaine, so Aesop's fables on the chairs. Have you seen the wall painting step? I know, the wall is incredible. There's a house there. Oh my goodness. Fountains. Oh. The guy is playing billiard and hey, yeah. smoking and drinking. Uh, we were here uh, gossiping. That sounds a lot more fun Speaking than French billiards. Every, every guy is <laughs> <we're> there. Yeah. <laughs> we still use this dining room, especially when we are in the house, because it's possible to extend the size of the table. And if we put all of the leaves, we can eat with 25 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a huge table, which is made in mahogany. Look at the floor, it's a gorgeous mosaic. It has been made by Italian artists from Venice, and they spent almost two years here in order to create this mosaic stone by stone. Wow. In this room, we have the oldest product of the castle. So this is a gentleman just above the door. This is one of my relatives who died in... He passed away in 1593. He always traveled with two horse carriages, the first for him and the second horse carriage for his personal one glass. <laughs> and it's absolutely amazing because we still have the glass. It's amazing this glass has never been broken. It's possible to put four bottles, that means three liters in that glass. <laughs> and according to the family legend, he used to drink this glass in one gulp. <laughs> 
<laughs> he, he passed away at 65, so for this time it was pretty good. Huh? Life expectancy was 30, 35. Wow. So if you want to live longer, drink wine. Drink, drink Chateau de wine. Yeah. <laughs> the next room is a former butler country, so between the kitchen and the dining room. You're so lucky! Gorgeous. It's amazing! <gasps> the fireplace is a huge one because it was necessary to have a big fire for heating and for cooking. But it was not very efficient to cook here. So during the 19th century, they put this stove. So this stove, it was a cold burner. And on each side, we have two water tanks. So it's possible to open. We put water in these tanks. And thanks to the tap, we have hot water. As you can see, this, this castle is set in the middle of the vineyard. So this castle is also a wine estate. So this one is only made with the plot just in front of the castle. This is called Splatified Eyes. Merci. Delighted to see a Gruja. The cheese puff is warm. Cheers. It somehow manages to be buttery and citrusy at the same time, which gives it great complexity and smoothness. I love it. Claire's offered us a little tour upstairs. Ooh, it's very mysterious going up here. So here you have the desk. It was the place where my father-in-law used to work because he was colonel. Was that his computer? Uh, yes, it was an old one. It's so <laughs> great that you still got that. The first Macintosh. That's incredible. So it's why there's all these stuff from uh, military things. Oh, that's his, his hat, is it? Mm. What I really love in September is uh, all these uh, little pink flowers. Do you know, we uh, saw them from the hot air balloon. Mm. I tried to film them yeah, from the balloon. Yeah, uh, it's the cyclamen. And, uh, There's it so was, many. Uh, it's everywhere. They are stunning. The trompe I love the trompe All of this panelling is painted. It's really, really clever. And you have little uh, place uh, with... Uh, Oh, little hidden doors in it. <laughs> no. well, it's a uh, toilet. But. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the chapel. And we still uh, use it for the um, baptism. Yes, baptism. The kids. So it's still consecrated. Yes. Uh, you can see we write all the things that, uh, that happen here. So you have seen uh, Hugues, Thibault, my second one. Yes. And. Uh, Amori. It's the whole history of the family in yeah. here. I love the window. Mm. And it's uh, a very nice system because uh, something like that. Ah, how clever. So you have the. So yes. you can clean the windows sometimes. <laughs> That's a lot easier to clean the stained glass windows than in our chapel. <laughs> <laughs> so many things to clean everywhere. <laughs> you can ring the bell if you want. I think There's I'm no way. Of the two of us, I'm probably the only one who can reach, right? <laughs> yeah, go and do it. Uh... No, that's so good. <laughs> so all the village will say, what's happened in the garden? <laughs> <laughs> so here uh, is an example of uh, a bedroom. What an alcove. The wallpaper. The ceiling. God. No, this is exquisite. It was two bedrooms, uh, the count bedroom just there and the countess bedroom here with a passage mm -hmm. between the both to visit <laughs> <laughs> during the night. <laughs> Have you seen the frame, Philip? Yes. Velvet. This one is uh, with a commode. A seminier. Oui. It's a one, one un tiroir par semaine, par jour. Yes, in France, these are called seminier, which means a weekly cupboard. Semaine is week, and they have seven drawers always. So you could organize your underwear. Oh, this is the bathroom or dressing room. Dressing or bathroom or... I put all my hats that I used to wear for a wedding. Or... Mm. This is charming. It is. So this is where Madame la Comtesse would come to get ready. Yes. Now we're going to look at the view. Still higher. Right up at the top of the spiral staircase, apparently the person who made the staircase has actually put their own face into it. How great is that? Hello, ancient stonemason. We have to go carefully on this one. Okay. Because he is from the 15th century. Oh. Hmm. So sometimes it's uh, just... Uh, Remind we'll treat him carefully. <laughs> this is spectacular. What a view you've got. 
So you must wake up to this view of the vineyards every day. Yeah, our uh, home is uh, on the seaside of the castle, so yes. we see uh, over there until Chalon. <laughs> and from here, you can keep an eye on everything that's happening in the chateau. Your husband is just saying goodbye to the tour group over there. My goodness, it's breathtakingly beautiful. And to live surrounded by such history. Merci beaucoup, c'était super, c'est tellement beau. Et à bientôt, j'espère. Ah oui, puis merci de votre visite. Uh, avec plaisir. Avec See you soon. <laughs> bye bye. This place is amazing. We can't stay any longer. I would love to sit and chat to Claire and her husband all afternoon. But of course, we have more wines to taste. So next stop, we're going to uh, see Pierre de Benoit at Domaine des Villiers at Mousseron. beautiful building. I'm starting to learn that in Burgundy much of what happens is in cellars. So I'm really happy to introduce all of you Pierre de Venoir. Welcome to the Domaine de Vilaine in Bouzeron where it is the only appellation, only the village appellation which comes from the Gouet varietal Aligoté. Aligoté. So it's a, yes. it's a very very um, rare in Burgundy so it is very very important for us and at the Domaine de Vilaine uh, we decided to continue to, to produce these grapes in foudre, in the big, uh, big wood tank, mm. because each foudre is dedicated to a parcel or a lieu dit at the Domaine de Vilaine. I see each parcel of land yes. just goes to one of these barrels. Exactly. The exchange between the wine, the wood and the air, the oxygen, is slower than in barrel or a wood tank. It means you, you print in the wine a slow attitude. Mm. A slow vinification, you know. Be quiet, be cool. You have the time to uh, to uh, to be transformed from fruit to to become a wine. And during the alcoholic fermentation, you have uh, you have a movement thanks to the, the thanks to the creation of gas. If you follow with your finger the movement of the gas, and this movement of gas represents the symbol of the eternity. Yes. Pierre is rather unusual in having this energetic approach to wine. And that's why I wanted to come here too, because we're in the same area as the Chateau de Chamiré that we've just visited, and yet we have a totally different approach happening here with the wines of Pierre de Benoit. He truly believes that to make a great wine, you need to consider the energy. And throughout this cellar, he's put points of copper here and there. But even after going to all this care, there was this one corner, this corner here, that had a very bad energetic feel. And all of the wines that he put for the lactic fermentation were not reaching the end of their fermentation. There was something blocking them, just the wines in the barrels in this corner. So he asked an expert to come from Belgium to get rid of this negative energy, and apparently he did his job too well. He cleansed the area so well that there was no energy at all in this corner. No good energy, no bad energy, nothing, an inertia. So just last week, a couple of experts arrived to try and put good energy back. And that's what we can see in this little box here. This is a box that has to clearly be put in a certain way facing north, south, east and west. It contains copper and magnets. And the idea is to draw an energetic field back to this corner. So it's only in a couple of years time that we will see how well it is done for these barrels. Is that a statue of you watching over the wine? Uh, yes, unfortunately it's me. Uh, <laughs> it's perfect from this distance. Okay. It's perfect from here. <laughs> but uh, but uh, when you are very close, it's so, it's so full. I think this is exactly how my wife sees me. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. When you test a, a glass of wine from Cochonez, you can test this biodiversity. And at the Domaine de Vilaine, we are in organic culture and... Uh, c'est vrai, c'est joli. Oh, c'est bon. Oui, c'est plus que joli. C'est joli. We are drinking now the Bouzeron 2020. My oldest vine of Aligoté is uh, 115 years old. Wow. I was very uh, happy to keep this vine alive because for me, it is the best Aligoté doré, well adapted to the terroir of Bouzeron and uh, able to reach the level of Appellation Village. Mm. Aligoté from Bouzeron has been the only Aligoté in Burgundy um, able to reach this level of Appellation. 250 million years ago, it was a sea here, a tropical sea, and the old seabed mm -hmm. became the slopes, these hills. 
And I'm sure this loop, they kept the memory of the sea. When you have some wine like Bouzeron, when you have some salty flavors, I'm sure it is the memory of this dead sea. Wine is the only product able to connect the past, but the past from a million years ago, and the present, and eventually the future. And there's not just a sense of the very distant past, this being a seabed 250 million years ago. As they tend to the vines, they find objects from the first and second century AD, 2,000 year old objects. There's also the energy from the people who lived here 2,000 years ago and who were also tending this soil. The energy of the fruit is very, is very beautiful, very um, luminous, comes up. After the vine, the wine. Whatever. It's quite incredible to be drinking the wine that you're seeing on the vine. Oh yeah, the vine's just there. It's really, really fruity. It's really lovely. I can't taste the Romans, but um, I can definitely get a, a lot of gentleness on it. And it's, it's gorgeous. Maybe the Romans who worked the land were very gentle. Maybe it's their spirit coming through. Maybe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Fascinating. I loved every moment. Wow. Thank you. This has been the best way of visiting all of the vineyards. It has been such good fun. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you uh, on board, you know. I'm sure that there's no better way of seeing the vineyards. I'm sure too. <laughs>